and good evening and welcome to the happenings in Medfield and the happenings at the center all in one. This evening I have two special guests and I am quite sure one in particular you have seen him a number of times here at Medfield TV. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce these specials because there is a change in a program. And I'll elaborate on that fact after I introduce. First, you all know him, Bill Johnson. Bill, nice seeing you. Thank you, Jack. It's really quite a pleasant experience coming over to Medfield TV. Uh, I've been involved with Flossie, Friends of Seniors Incorporated, for, gosh, close to 12 years. And we've gone from uh, just a, a small operation, we've expanded, and we're really moving along quite well. One of the things, like everything else, as you stay on a job in one position, uh, there's a tendency to get stale. And it was always my point was to find somebody who had some energetic ideas, more so than me. And uh, Chuck here, Chuck Conti, he's a, uh, he's a young senior. And he's been really, really involved. And right now he is president. I'm going to act as sort of a director. But Chuck has got fresh ideas and they seem to be re working out pretty well. Well, so. Bill, I want to introduce Chuck because he is now the president of Fosse. And you, I understand, you're taking a directorship. Chuck, nice meeting you. Same here, Jack. You know, Fosse is predominant in Medfield primarily for all the effort put forth at the center. And so what I'm going to do is turn this back over to Bill and to you, Chuck, and fill us in on your plans, what you're contemplating, and other areas which are important to the seniors. Bill? Okay, one of the areas, uh, as a matter of fact, ironically, we were having a mini meeting at the center this morning, and uh, I'm going to really have Chuck elaborate on this, but we're looking to uh, combine the Council on Aging website and the Fosse website so that uh, in general uh, you can go to the one station outlet and get the full information. And I'm going to leave it up to Chuck to explain this. It's his idea and so forth. Chuck, it's all up to you. Well, that's one thing I thought would be a, uh, a um, helpful outcome with, the, with having two different websites right now. We have uh, more maintenance than we really need. It costs us more than we really need to spend. And uh, first we have to make sure that Roberta uh, Lynch, the director of the Council on Aging, is happy with that arrangement. She's, uh, she's got a pretty good website going with the, uh, the center at Medfield. It's set up now so that the... Um, People that go there can uh, take a look at whether or not they want to rent out the, the center for a, uh, a personal affair or a corporate affair or that kind of thing. Or if they're interested in senior events and um, um, senior um, ideas. And uh, obviously Fosse is a part of that, that senior uh, thing. Right now the Fosse website has the um, um, the newsletter that Roberta puts out every month on its website with, uh, with uh, links on the uh, Center of Medfield website uh, pointing to the Fosse website to get that. And there's really no need of maintaining both websites. We think that, that we can do the same job um, with a single website, actually get people more familiar with Fosse in the process. Uh, right now, I think a lot of people still don't understand what part Fosse plays in assisting the Council on Aging's efforts to bring high-quality service, services to the seniors in Medfield. 
Bill, I know, and I had said earlier at the beginning of the program, uh, you've been on camera right here at Medfield TV for a number of times. I've had people say that they've enjoyed well, it's what good to you hear. have to offer. And now that Chuck has taken the reins, even though you were one of the directors or the director at Fosse, areas in which you had covered over the number of years is quite a bit, money-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, building up the center, and I know that takes an awful lot of effort. And so, Chuck, what have you got in mind that Bill will be turning over to you? Well, with the, um, as time goes by, more and more I think things are changing. Uh, the number of people that, that are uh, becoming accustomed to doing stuff on, on computers is uh, uh, growing over, over that time period. Um, year, years gone by, people looked more to newspapers and to other ways of getting their information and now, now more and more people are looking to sources like the internet for, for getting their information. We're trying to use those resources to um, 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 make certain that the message gets out and gets uh, transmitted effectively to all, all parties and uh, people can respond uh, in either volunteering to work with FOSSI or donating to FOSSI or the Council on Aging for, for our efforts and, uh, and keep going. We've generated what we call a wish list that um, um, is kind of a list of items that were not possible for inclusion at the center at Medfield by when it was being built because uh, the, the budget at the time just didn't allow for that. And so we're, we're trying to you know, fill in the gaps and uh, make sure that things that, that are, are useful uh, to the seniors will be available uh, at the center. You know, the center is an important function to seniors. I know that uh, Bill had laid emphasis on that factor many, many times. And so, gentlemen, I'm going to rely on two factors. Number one, what have you got in mind? And uh, what's left that you have to pick up? Bill and Chuck, you'd like to answer those questions. Well, I'll tell you, uh, to the back of the building, we now have a patio area that, uh, sort of the goodness of one of the, uh, the banks, they uh, uh, furnish the, uh, the monies, better than $5,000 to put in a concrete slab. And now we have a useful area out there for uh, uh, dinners and so forth. But one of the things we, we really need for it is some form of a covering over it to shield uh, the afternoon from the sun rays coming over the uh, top of the building and so forth. But it's like everything else. Everything uh, costs money. We're probably talking something of perhaps three to four or five thousand dollars. But more importantly, uh, to go out searching for this money, we have to have some form of a good estimate as to what it will cost. If, if uh, one of us goes to one of the banks in town looking for a grant, the first thing they'll say is, what do you expect it to cost? And you can't just give general numbers, you have to have some specifics. So one of the biggest, pro I should say the biggest uh, dilemma I faced was trying to get somebody who's more of a uh, uh, engineering type to come in and give a legitimate estimate as to what we need. Uh, we envisioned probably something like a pergola type of roof that would cut down the sun rays. We could get a, of a more personal nature, but now you got to get working about, if you have a solid roof, the snow load effect and so forth. 
So it's uh, a lot of these things are more involved than than people realize and so forth. Certainly sounds that way, yeah. Bill. Chuck, and, and probably the biggest thing on the agenda right now is a replacement of one of the buses that we use to transport people back and forth. Glad you brought that up. And uh, go ahead, you, you obviously have something to say about that. Well, I know I have talked to Roberta relative to it, uh, the bus, because of the transportation factor. Mm -hmm. As you, both of you gentlemen know, <laughs> thank the good Lord for small favors, the <laughs> price of gasoline is coming down, uh, but the necessity of a new bus. Chuck, can you fill us in? Well, uh, you know, ironically, uh, as, as Bill has told me over the years, you know, the, um, um, Fosse actually had its roots in providing transportation for uh, for seniors in town, and uh, so it. it I, th I think transportation for elder citizens has, has always been an issue. As as people get older, it's tougher and tougher for mm -hmm. them to either drive themselves or to have uh, access to transportation. Medfield is not exactly. Um, um, great for having taxis and that kind of things that, that somebody can just call up somebody and say, okay, I need a ride, except, except for the center where there, there is a shuttle available and um, we now have uh, two vehicles in our fleet that are really aging and really showing signs of uh, deterioration and we need to get those replaced as soon as possible. Uh, Roberta's been, uh, Roberta Lynch again, uh, has been um, going through the process of identifying not only the vehicle, but uh, the agencies that, that can provide the vehicle to us. Of course, there's always a bidding process and a, uh, a process of uh, identifying um, vendors that, that are acceptable uh, to the state and to the town for provisioning uh, this, this sort of vehicle. And so all of that's still being hammered out and um, um, when the time comes, you know, Fosse will be there to provide the additional funds that, that uh, haven't been allocated by the town to uh, be able to uh, provide this, this basic transportation for those that need it. What other areas, Chuck, besides the bus program, have uh, you got on your plate relative to uh, Fosse? Well, well, yeah, um, you know, there there are plenty of other things that are identified in our wish list, and our wish list is going to be uh, posted on our website very soon. Uh, another big um, requirement that we have is uh, a a new um, sound system for the for the center. The one that we have was actually uh, recouped from uh, uh, from from trash uh, recycle areas and and pressed into service. This stuff is re really getting to the point where it's um, um, uh, inaudible in some cases. And so we, we need to get something that's going to be uh, workable in all situations, whether somebody's uh, speaking at the center or somebody's giving a, uh, a big party at the center. So that's one thing. You know, many times Bill and I have talked about this one issue. It's very, very important to the individual and very important to the center. At the closing of a lot of programs with Roberta, we always mention one important thing. And I'm going to turn this over to Bill because it all started with him. Buy a brick, Bill. Well, that w <laughs> when we... Uh moved into the new location, uh, one of the things, I should go back historically, when I got involved with Fosse and I was asked to become president, uh, people told me, well, it's a nonprofit organization, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, when I was working, I worked for a corporation and uh, uh, you had to know specifically what you're talking about. So the first thing I did was uh, I contacted the IRS. They had an office in downtown Boston, and I started going through the procedure. And it took a good part of a year 
going through and finally getting it resolved that we were officially a nonprofit organization, a 501c3. And that came about uh, finally from, of all places, San Francisco sending us a letter approving it. Well, we had a uh, relatively uh, small amount of money in the bank. We had a lot of planned ideas, but the whole point was where could we go and we couldn't do anything unless we had some money in the bank. So I don't know whatever prompted me or somebody suggested, but we found there was a source of uh, a company that took the standard brick and uh, etched it in such a way that you could put lettering into it and so forth. And that's how it all began. We started uh, soliciting people to buy a brick as a remembrance or whatever. And that became, quite candidly, our money pit and so forth. Uh, it, it's hard to uh, imagine when you look at that area that surrounds the flagpole, but there's a, uh, a number of engraved bricks and it, it still is growing on a regular basis. And I think it generated pretty close to $20,000. It's hard to believe, but it's been something that people see now uh, grandkids can uh, uh, buy a brick through their parents, maybe for one of their grandparents and so forth. It's a remembrance type of thing. But it's become a focal point of, uh, of raising some monies. Because in many cases, I get people who'll say to me, well, Bill, what does Fosse do with the money that it raises? If, uh, if you look at our financial picture, you'd be really surprised to see, uh, all right, perhaps what we bring in in income, but what we give out. We give out as much or more than what we take in. And we're able to do that is because we've created a backlog of some monies. But a lot of it is just impulses. Roberta might say to me, well, Bill, can Fosse do this or do that? For instance, a simple thing, we as we started to get into more and more uh, events that were being held there, like Chuck points out, we have an antiquated sound system and so forth. And one of the things was we were kind of hidebound to uh, the unit that we had there. And uh, it, it came about, Roberta says, gee, if we could get some uh, handheld mics, microphones, we were able to go out and purchase, I think it was six of them, and they might have cost, uh, I could be off on this, $100 a piece, $600. Well, you know, $600 doesn't grow on trees, but we did have some monies. And now, if we have an affair there, we can uh, pass out these handheld mics to people who uh, don't have to stand in front of a fixed microphone. So it's little things like that that are hard to pin your finger on. Chuck created the, uh, uh, the listing of the wish list and so forth, and it's remarkable. We get a lot of donated items, uh, aftermath of the yard sale and so forth. And I had suggested to Roberta, gee, if we had a display cabinet, we could create, say, a bit of a cash flow and so forth. So uh, she and I went out to one of the furniture stores and we purchased a uh, a very, very attractive mahogany uh, glass shelf. And now that's stocked with a lot of items at moderate prices and people can buy these things. But the aftermath is it gives Roberta a little extra spending money for some of the affairs we have. So we don't get into having to ask for money. It, it, we've been very, very fortunate. That bill is a lot of information to me. I know, Chuck, you'd mentioned it earlier. Now, your wish list. What are you wishing for? 
<laughs> well, there are more, more uh, pieces of equipment that would complement the center or to replace something that uh, needs to be retired at the center. And uh, as Bill mentioned, you know, we, we did get a, a wireless microphone system that's, that's very good for, for when we have uh, multiple pub public speakers uh, in the great room at the center. Um, we've uh, we've uh, purchased a wireless um, um, router s so that anybody can hook up at the center um, either through their, their smartphone or their, their computer. So all that's uh, been provided by Fosse. Um, um, this and that, there's lots of sundry items that, um, um, you know, we, we've provided there just, just to make things a lot easier. We provided, I believe we provided the Wii, right? Yep. And, um, uh, let's see, a camera for the center, th this and that. So it's, uh, a lot of small items. The shed, uh, was provided by Fosse. And, uh, you know, we had a, uh, very ge generous contributor that, uh, that helped out and uh, did the majority of the uh, the financing for the shed, uh, the snow blower, lawn mowers, things like that, are all examples of things that that Fosse's purchased along the way, and uh, a lot of these things um, you'd expect would, would come out of the regular town budget thing, but uh, in a lot of cases uh, the, the budget isn't really there to uh, to be able to capture all this this stuff, and so Fosse tries to help fill the gap. In programs like Buy a Brick, and it, you know the, the Buy a Brick, Brick program is a great memento for people to um, to have a a, a permanent uh, remembrance of somebody or of themselves, their family, and like Bill says, it's a great um, way for us to uh, to get some some money into our uh, program in that. Well, I find that Buy a Brick, and I've told Vittle more than once is a very, very important factor. You buy a brick, you place it. It's a memory. But there is a memory that is never forgotten. Mm -hmm. And consequently, a brick <coughs> with a name is very, very important to the individual that, that places it there. Remembering father, mother, grandmother, grandfather, name it. And so it's very, very important to people to constantly being reminded by a brick. Now that brings up a point. I've talked to Bill about cost. Cost has changed. What is the costing factor now to buy a brick? Uh, the typical brick, the uh, four by eight, uh, is $100. Uh, you can get a larger, oh God, what's the dimensions, 8x8, eight eight. Uh, I could be off, I didn't have my notes on this, uh, that's $250. The great majority of bricks are of the $100 variety, and it's a simple process. We order the brick, uh, it's delivered by, say, UPS, and <laughs> Roberta or Bill Pardee, our bus driver, goes out with a trowel in hand and what they do is they pop up a, a blank brick that is in the ground and just drop the brand new brick in and voila it's all done and uh, off we go but it's uh, it's been a remarkable experience. Now people that are going to be buying a brick, and this is hypothetical, mm -hmm. will they go to the center and fill out a form uh, or what? Right now it works out the simple way is uh, the ordering blanks are there. Uh, Roberta will uh, take your money and process the brick. We'll uh, order the brick. It comes from, of all places, Miami. And we'll probably have it within 10 days, and it'll probably be in the ground as soon as we get it and so forth. Now, you know, gentlemen, I'm going to be... Talking one other question to you, Chuck. Sure. The holidays are upon us. Thanksgiving is right around the corner, and then comes Christmas. What do you gentlemen have in mind? Well, we have a, um, a holiday uh, dinner party coming up that we have uh, every year, and uh, this year is no exception. And uh, it's always held at the American Legion. There are about 150 people that go. Yeah. To the uh, to the affair, 
and it's a it's a party that everyone always en en enjoys uh, so much. It's it's good that they get and we we have some entertainment uh, provided for them this year. We have uh, um, somebody uh, uh, playing the accordion and singing and and telling jokes and that that kind of thing and. Uh, um, he's actually performed for the COA in the past, but not since the days when the COA was in the FAF Center. So it's uh, it'll be good to get him back here and um, and to have uh, his uh, style of entertainment available again. Most definitely, Chuck. Bill, what have you got on the top of your head in your mind? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the organizations. I don't want to just single out one because then. I might forget the others that, but I, I tell you, I'm always impressed by what uh, the Lions Club has done to help Fosse. We just got through with uh, the Chowder Fest, and that's a little simple procedure of going up, uh, paying a certain amount of money, and having an opportunity to sample clam chowders that are done by uh, the various businesses, restaurants supermarkets and so forth in the surrounding area. And more importantly though, uh, in this case it'll be Chuck, uh, the January meeting of the Lions Club, uh, he'll be invited to go there and uh, their plans are to present a sizable check, which is pretty much what the gate receipts were from that. And you know, uh, we don't go out, even though people kid me uh, a lot about, oh God, it's money, money, money. We don't have the so-called fun drive, you know, the big thermometer in the lobby and all. Everything is generated by the generosity of the people and so forth. And we have been blessed. And uh, it's, uh, it's been a remarkable run. That's about all I can say. It has been more yeah. than one way. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I see that old clock. That old clock, wall. that's right, Jack. The old <laughs> clock on the wall. And so, in closing, I will first to you, Chuck. Is there anything you'd like to say before we say good night? Well, I'd, I'd just like to thank all the uh, nonprofits that have helped us out over over the years: uh, the Medfield Foundation, the Lions, the American Legion, uh, New in Town. Uh, Hannah Adams, Medfield TV. There's, there's a ton of them. There's a ton I'm forgetting. And uh, you know, the great thing about the nonprofits in Medfield is that they all kind of work together to help each other out, one hand washing the other. Uh, one, one organization I'd like to spend a little more time with helping out is the uh, the uh, food pantry. And you know, I think um, it's going to be very important as the uh, the cold weather descends upon us and the holidays come. That, that we all be generous to, to the food pantry. Chuck, that's very, very important. That's a good cause. Bill, anything? No, Jack, I think we've covered everything, and uh, we look forward to the next time we're on Medfield Television. Go. Well, Chuck, I want to say, as the new president, <laughs> congratulations. Thank you very much. And as Bill, the director, congratulations. Yes, sir, Jack. And gentlemen, thank you very much for stopping by, sitting at the anger desk, telling us all about <laughs> Fosse. This is Jack Peterson wishing you and yours the very best. Good night. Production support provided by Medfield.tv. Access to our community.